Welcome. Even though the 2021 snap parliamentary elections in, in Armenia are over, CivilNet will now like to embark on a series of English interviews with the ver various political forces from across the spectrum in Armenia. Uh, today we're joined by one of the members of the seven-member secretariat of the Sasnatsrer Pan-Armenian Party, Garegin Chugasian. Uh, the party ran as part of an electoral bloc in the 2021 elections, a national democratic poll. Uh, the bloc came in eighth place in this election with just under 19,000 votes. So Mr. Chugasian, thank you very much for your time. Thanks. So to start off, um, can you explain what is Sasnatsrer's platform? What is their vision for Armenia? And what would a Sasnatsrer government look like? First of all, I would like to say that uh, we participated in the elections under Askainjur uh, Tavarakam Bever, which is translated as National Democratic Axis uh, Party, though it, it was registered just a month ago or so. And it was uh, it is a more more a movement rather than a party, and uh, it, it consists not only of Sasnatsrer party, but there are other parties as well, but also non non party members in Bever, and I am part of of the board of uh, Bever, and we have been participating in this election as Asganjur Tarakam Bever or uh, National Democratic Axis. So Sasnatsrer is part of that movement and uh, so I would rather speak on behalf of the Bever than only our part because we have been participating under that name. So the Bever, Bever, Tavarkan Bever, is, uh, has been formed uh, about a year ago uh, and we understood that we are living in a time, very dramatic time, and uh, the crisis that was uh, obvious for us and uh, we had spoken and had done several announcements about the dangers of uh, Abkhazization of, of Karabakh. Unfortunately, nobody heard from other uh, spectrum of politi or political se spectrum of Armenia and uh, the power, people in power as well never put uh, any serious attention to our announcements. But uh, we were feeling that we are moving towards a very serious crisis and uh, the dramatic times that we are living in, as we understand, are extraordinary times. So we had an alternative vision for, for the changes in Armenia. And uh, we, our position towards the snap elections was that it was not the time for doing snap elections. We, we need to have transitionary, extraordinary government in Armenia, which had to mobilize our nation towards the, all the dangers uh, that we have now for Armenia. And only changing uh, the atmosphere in Armenia from anonymity and hatred towards cooperation and rehabilitation we could come up to snap elections after some time. So uh, we have done announcements before snap elections that we are not regarding these elections as something that will uh, solve uh, the question of stability, political stability in Armenia. Rather, it could bring to even harder political tensions in Armenia. But we decided to participate because, uh, as you know, uh, our uh, movement and Sasnatsarer as well, after participating in the first elections in 2018, we have been uh, out of reach of any media. Uh, the public media hasn't uh, given us any, any exposure, but also as Armenia's media is ma uh, uh, under uh, strict uh, you know, monopolization of former and new powers in Armenia, we hadn't access for our alternative vision, visions that we have for Armenia. So we decided to participate and use this opportunity to, to share our views with wider audiences in Armenia and in the diaspora. 
another thing I find quite interesting is that both the National Democratic Axis uh, and the Civil Contract Party obviously have connections to the revolution, both supported the revolution, both are vehemently opposed to the former, former governments. There are these uh, um, kind of uh, similarities, but they are also massive differences. I'm curious how the National Democratic Axis views the Pashinyan government, why um, it has its stance towards the Pashinyan uh, government, even though they do have certain uh, political similarities, in a sense. Um, you know, uh, when the revolution of 2018 happened, uh, many members of Sasna Tsarej uh, were in prison and after that uh, there was uh, my meeting uh, with Pashinyan um, and he promised that uh, he, uh, the people will come out of the prisons because this is obviously a criteria for revolution. If Bastilla is open then you have a revolution but unfortunately uh, the court proceedings are continuing until now and this is the only political party or movement in Armenia who is under pressure and still having uh, these uh, proceedings. Uh, all others, formers, have been uh, so-called uh, uh, washed up and now they are part of, of the ruling elite again in the new parliament. So this obviously shows the differences that we have with the ruling, uh, ruling power in Armenia. And uh, speaking uh, in political terms, we think that uh, political agenda of ruling elite in Armenia is uh, not reflecting the realities, uh, political realities around us. And uh, we are the bankruptcy of the state that we have witnessing. Uh, and even even you are calling the new parliament that has been formed a liquidators commission because uh, it is not uh, reflecting the security the new security architecture that is being formed in the region and in the world and uh, the new uh, let's say fourth industrial revolution which has been uh, obvious during the war that we are out of that revolution, whereas Azerbaijan, being allied with Turkey, is using the fifth generation warfare. And other things which are obvious, but unfortunately, uh, the ruling elite of Armenia is still having a political agenda which is completely out of, the, of these realities. We are speaking about new world, new order, and the most, of the, the most important difference is that we insist that Armenia has to do a U-turn in its foreign policy and that the, the concept that the security uh, of the region belongs only to Russia uh, and, and the keys to the stability belong to Russia uh, are obviously not true. And we are bankrupt exactly because of that. In the last 30 years, all power uh, people who have come to power in Armenia, they were uh, working with Russia, thinking that they, that they will uh, never let a war happen in Karabakh. Well, I actually want to ask about that, because when you mention the National Democratic Axis or Sassanat Sereta people, uh, Russia comes up a lot as, as a topic. And in the party manifesto, if I'm correct, the f it, it is ris written that the party seeks to liberate Armenia from Russian colonial rule. The party has called for the withdrawal of Armenia from the CSTO, the CIS, and the EEU, um, and the closure of Russian military bases in the country. Uh, some people feel that this is a Pandora's box, however, and worry what would happen to Armenia if these uh, policies were enacted. So can you explain why uh, that wouldn't put Armenia's security in jeopardy if such decisions were made? You see, we understand the new world order as a new phase of rivalry between China and the United States. And this rivalry in Eurasia is reflected also in Caucasus. 
and uh, um, Russia uh, on its own understands that it's uh, retreating as a nation and uh, they are trying to find uh, their new role as a mediator between West and uh, China or uh, United States and China and but they do not have enough economic or military means to do that that's why they are trying to come to alliance with Turkey and Turkey also is not finding its role in new role and so one of the this great uh, Russia, Russian uh, Empire which uh, is not empire at all now but uh, the feeling of empire is still there they are trying to envision a new uh, Golden Horde or Soviet Union 2.0 whereas Turkey is envisioning Turan 2.0 project and so these two powers, regional powers, are trying to have this alliance uh, which we call non-natural alliance because they have been always rivalry between those two powers but uh, for if historically 100 years ago we have seen a short period of such kind of alliance between uh, Bolsheviks and Kemal Ataturk and we lost uh, the Armenia was occupied and divided into portions now after 100 years the situation is very similar but also very different because 100 years ago Russia was came back to the region with new ideology of communism it was a strong ideology and even many talented uh, and genius people like Charent, uh, you know, thought that this communism will save Armenian nation. Um, unfortunately, we know the losses that Armenia had under that occupation. And, uh, and the Turkey, after some short period of, uh, you know, uh, good relations with Russia, they became part of NATO during the, the after Second World War. Now, the situation has changed because uh, instead of British Empire leaving the region, United States is returning back to the region, and uh, it has a strong new uh, vision of the new world, which is con connected with Fourth Industrial Revolution, whereas Russia has no idea, no no concept of, of the future. Uh, Turkey has its pan-Islamic and pan-Turanic uh, visions and it's much stronger than Russia, especially in our southern Caucasus region. And Russia doesn't want to collide, uh, to, to be in, con in conflict with Turkey and is retreating. In fact, it is a retreat because they brought Turkish, uh, Turkey to southern Caucasus and now Turkey is speaking about military bases in Azerbaijan. And this is because Russia is retreating. Now, Armenia is in real trouble. We need to understand what could be alternative scenarios for our security. And we see that well, the West has its own vision of Eurasia and they are trying to create a northeast axis, which is somehow a uh, containment policy towards Russia, China and also Turkey. So in, uh, in these circumstances, in this context, there is possibility for Armenia to be on this, on this uh, main road in Eurasia, which is North Axis Road. If we'll manage to be on that road, then we'll get our security, we'll get uh, billions of dollars of uh, investment, and also we will get technology transfer to Armenia. Because this is the new world where the world could be built, but we have to do our homework. Armenians have to do, and we, as political movement, uh, are trying to speak with our nation to show that alternative, which is very different from what uh, Pashinyan is saying or any other uh, movement in Armenia or party is still doing. But Pashinyan and Aliyev have spoken about a possible future peace treaty eventually uh, between Armenia and Azerbaijan and to resolve the, the Karabakh issue. I'm c uh, curious how you and the force you represent view the prospect of peace uh, and how to resolve the, the issue of Karabakh with, with which all other issues seem to revolve. You know, um, we are a unique nation uh, that have experienced genocide. 
but we are also unique because uh, there hasn't been a, a Nuremberg trial for our genocide. So uh, be before, be if, if that is not accepted by perpetrators, Turkey, how we can come with in terms to in terms to, uh, with as a peace process with uh, Turkey or Azerbaijan? And I'm, when speaking about Azerbaijan, we have to understand that they are always connected with Turkey. So. The mo important question is here that uh, the peace process is a tango process. It, both parties have to play. And we do not see that Turkey or Azerbaijan would really like to solve these issues. And Armenia has been always a major problem in these uh, major plans of creating pan-Turkic world, pan-Turkic process and project. And now we see that uh, Erdogan has such kind of plans. We see that Erdogan is now present in uh, Afghanistan. Now they are speaking in Central Asia. They are having agreements with Central Asian governments, right? Those governments which are part of uh, this Russian-led union, military union, right? And there is no interest, coinciding interest between us and all those countries which are part of that Russian military union. Unfortunately, we have to find alternatives. This is the situation right now. And uh, many are wary of the national democratic axis and uh, the Sosnatsar pan-Armenian party and feel that it's synonymous <coughs> with political violence. Uh, before its founding as a party, there was a group with the name Sosnatsar that was involved in a, in a hostage crisis and the murdering of, of three policemen. The party has since renounced uh, violence, uh, all those group members have, but how, how can uh, your force move past this reputation? What do you think about that as a theme? Mm, I think you are under propaganda because uh, even the way you framed your question uh, as something that it was a violence group or we are doing any violence. No, it was uprising. And we know that every nation has a right for uprising if there is an unlawful government. And we knew at that time, everybody knew that it was an unlawful government which was trying to sell uh, Karabakh. And we know even the price that five billion dollars were suggested, right? And so at that time, Armenian nation has the right for that uprising. Now speaking about the murders of three policemen, are you sure that we have, uh, our group has murdered those policemen? Well, Is uh, it it's somewhere, somewhere uh, proven? We know that, you know, even the parents of, of this poli one of the policemen is stating that his, his son is not murdered by, by Sasna Tsarer. Why are you stating as a, as a, state, a statement? The, the, even the even the uh, card, uh, Serge Saxon's card, and prosecutors never spoke about this as a, as a group which is the, trying to um, be a terrorist or so. And w w so uh, your question, the framework of your question shows that you are under propaganda. So, I'm, but I'm interested then about more the reputational side of it, whether. It uh, is is true or not? There are some that have this uh, fear or wariness. I'm curious what your message would be to those people that uh, may well agree with policies, but are more worried about those reputational um, scruples. Uh, you know, uh, when BBC um, was here during Sasna Tsarer uh, revolt. They couldn't find anybody who, who would speak against Sasna Tsarer. You know this fact, right? There were nobody who could. Speak. But after those two years, when the guys were in were in prison, there was a massive, massive <coughs> propaganda against them, trying to show that they these guys were there for you know taking money out of bankomats or something. Even the prosecution, the whole process uh, in in the court. Uh, we see that uh, you know they are speaking about things which these guys n w were there for something else. Everybody w knew that. It is obvious that this was not for personal gains or anything, right? And when we speak about 
about the Polish uh, three people who had been lost during those events. We, we have to think that during revolts there have been in all countries. Uh, we have seen such kind of unpleasant uh, situations where people's lives are lost, but we have much many people lost, much many hundreds of policemen were lost during this war and nobody is responsible for that. Nobody. And we have thousands of people lost in this war and nobody is responsible for that. But we are speaking about those policemen, two, two three policemen who unfortunately have lost their lives and we are speaking about these thousands of people and we have to compare. And we, uh, due to Sassnatsara revolt, we got four years, four additional years to prepare for the war. And uh, we were speaking about, uh, about preparing for war. Nobody was listening to that, right? And it is obvious now that we lost the war because we were not prepared. And again, we are continuing that movement, an irresponsible movement toward future, without thinking that we have to prepare for this war. And I'm also curious what uh, your standpoint is with, with regards to the new opposition in Armenia, the Armenia Alliance, and also the I have uh, on a block, which has, I believe, seven seats now in the new parliament. Uh, former President Robert Kocharyan spoke about restoring public trust in the opposition, but uh, the movement you represent has made a very clear stance of being opposed to the current and also the yeah. former administration. So can you explain what is the stance of your movement towards the current political opposition in the country, parliamentary opposition in the country? Yeah. Um, as I said already, um, we regard the situation of Armenia as a bankruptcy situation. And uh, during any bankruptcy, there are two possible ways out of that bankruptcy. One is liquidation, total liquidation of the business. And now we regard that this parliament is exactly the liquidator's commission, which is destroying everything, destroying security, destroying army, destroying the future, destroying foreign relations, everything. We do not believe in this parliament. We think that it will have a very short period of life, maybe. And last, during last elections, uh, I would remind that we said that uh, Pashinyan's uh, parliament will last two years. It lasted maybe two and a half years. Now we are saying that this will last not more than one year, maybe less than that, because the situation is drastically changing all over the world, around us. Now, um, Given this, you know, the second way out of bankruptcy is uh, when you are liquidating obsolete equipment, when uh, um, underperforming branches are being changed, and most pro importantly, you are changing the management of the company. What and we have not, nothing done in that direction. The management, the old and new man management now is in government, in parliament, right? Who is going to, to change, do, to do that necessary change to, to make that bankruptcy rehabilitated? So our solution is that we need, after some time, there will be an extraordinary situation, extraordinary solution, extraordinary government, which will be a transitionary government towards the rehabilitation of the bankruptcy business. And this is to be ha happening very soon. And I suppose now the plan of the National Democratic Axis is just that. I'm curious, what are your plans now going future, uh, going into the future as a political movement? Uh, like uh, we in 2018, we started the revolution and it was not Pashinyan that did the revolution, it was the nation who did the revolution. Unfortunately, all the promises that Pashinyan gave, he never, uh, you know, did anything, uh, systematic change to, to, the, to, to Armenia and we, we came to this uh, catastrophe that we have now. And so that revolution has to come to life somehow. And that revolution had started uh, in the uh, squares and it will continue in the squares.
Okay. Well, Mr. Hukasian, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on CivilNet.